So hello to you all and welcome back. Today I'm going to do a review on this uh, new rucksack that I've just purchased from um, S-Stop. It's called the Ajna and it's part of the Mountain Series and this is actually a 40 litre rucksack. Um, the good thing about this rucksack and I mean I've got many 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 bags and I think you know in these days for many photographers you can never do without too many bags. Um, all my other bags are primarily designed really to, to carry large amounts of kit and with lack of additional space. So this bag really is designed for overnight, for trekking, not for like days, weeks on end, this bag being the lower end of the, of the, um, the size range for the mountain series from F-Stop um, and up to the shin, which is I think 70, 80 litre bag, which is absolutely huge to fill your prime lenses in. But for me, I'm going away soon up to uh, Exmoor National Park and I'm going to be trekking around and I want to take um, certain lenses with me, but nothing too big, nothing too heavy, and I want to take some coats, maybe a sleeping bag, maybe a bivvy, things like that. So um, I purchased this bag. They're not the cheapest. They are really, really good bags. Um, thankfully, I got quite a big discount for being part of the Canon Professional Service, so I got a bit of a discount on that. But this um, review today, we'll just go um, touch over the stuff that it's got, really not going too in depth. Um, but I have no way got anything to do with f-stop I bought this with my own money so it's not really getting any benefit from this just to give you an idea if you want to look for a different type of bag this bag really is is a, a great overall trekking camera bag really so when I purchased this bag um, it came all the way from the Netherlands uh, and when I received the bag um, what's in, contained inside is obviously the bag itself and this is the accessing point here for your camera compartment fitted with an ICU I'll go into that a bit later so the ICU on this one I bought the essentials bundle so it's the bottom bundle and it goes there's, there's two varying types of, um, of ones you can do there's called the essential bundle which I had and there's the elite and there's also the master uh, and that's already pre-fitted inside and we'll go inside and, and show you that shortly but with that bundle I also get um, some uh, f-stop gatekeeper straps, just additional straps to strap in tripods and, and uh, sleeping bag tent or whatever to the outside. So that came with a bundle, the ICU, the bag and that, um, which does save you a few quid um, if you buy them as a bundle rather than as separate. Okay, in addition to, to what I bought, um, as I've just explained, is the large rain cover, which obviously fits around to the extremes of the bag, keeping it nicely tucked in just in adverse weather conditions. These aren't expensive at all. Um, this is probably about 11, 12 English pounds. So it really isn't an awful lot um, considering, you know, um, you know, what gear you've got inside. But I really would like to have seen that integral as part of the bag, maybe fit in the base, like a lot of the low pro bags. Um, but still, it's, it's there as an additional one. And also here, because this um, bag, as you can see there, if you can, it's hydration compatible. Um, obviously the hose coming out there and that sits inside the bag down in the corner there, right next to your individual uh, camera um, units, internal camera units, what they call them. And that sits next to that. Now, if that were to leak, then that could leak potentially on your camera gear. So uh, not ideal. So um, I bought this additional pouch which will just safeguard any uh, any leaks or anything into the uh, into the bag. Then obviously you don't want to get your camera gear or your equipment wet. So uh, yeah, and that was only about roughly about ten pounds. So really, you know, it's a, a must really. But it would be lovely to see the company add in these sort of additional extras really with the bag, um, you know, rather than as separates really. But uh, but still, it's relatively inexpensive. And also, I got given with it. The bag is comes with a nice external pouch to keep the bag in. I kind of don't know what I'm going to use that for, but uh, maybe just to put some uh, waterproof some kit in, just uh, squish that down in the back of the car or something. But still, I suppose it's nice to have a little bag. Um, now we're going to go into the uh, a, a bit more about the bag itself and about its carrying load, etc. Okay, just a quick overview on the uh, F-Stop series then. This um, F-Stop Ajna is the second one up from the bottom. 
of the mountain series, the bottom one being Lotus and the one at the top being the Shin. The Lotus is a 30 litre and the Shin is up to about 70 or 80 litres. So this, this I picked out to, to do me for what I need really. It's not heavy duty trekking, um, but it's certainly one that will keep you going for a couple of days. So with the camera equipment and obviously some more gear at the top and lots of attachment straps around the, around the top there and from the sides. Okay, it's made out of very, very strong uh, water resistant treated 420T ripstop nylon. So that sounds like a, a, a bit of a mouthful, but basically the, the actual material itself is absolutely solid. You know, it will take sharp, sharp knocks, scrapes, bangs, you know, it really is hard wearing stuff. And having served 22 years in the military, um, we make a lot of our survival stuff out of 420D ripstop uh, nylon stuff. So it's really, really good. It's nice to see that in a, in a backpack. Okay, it's got Hapalon as well um, around certain areas. So just more areas there, like at the base, as you can see there, it's kind of like a rubberized material, really hard wearing, obviously when you have your, your bag on the ground, on rocks, um, you know, and, and areas where it can be quite rough. Obviously it's extra, extra protection there as well. Um, also, um, it's got drainage holes, they call them weak holes, um, just there. Obviously if the bag gets a lot of moisture in it, it's just a drip hole at the bottom. Let's hope it doesn't get that bad. Um, the material itself is um, water resistant treated and it's got like a, a thing called a TPU laminate, which um, basically it's drizzle, sort of light rain use. Um, but really if you want to go into serious weather conditions, you've um, really got to fit the, um, the rain cover, which you have to buy separately, unfortunately, and which is not attached to the bag. So it's one that you'd have to carry into the side pouches. But uh, yeah, all in all though, it will take a, a bit of a splash um, of, of water, but uh, you know, to safeguard your kit inside, you really do need to have that, uh, that rain cover just in case you get caught in a downpour. Okay, we're just gonna go into the um, comfort of this bag actually. It provides really an exceptional all day support provided by uh, an internal aluminium strap. Um, and if we can just open this bag up. Pillow out for illustration purposes. I think inside there you can see, quite important, and if you can see, you can just see there, if you can just there, there's an aluminium frame strap all the way around. So probably better illustrated there. Okay, and that gives you some really good support there and keeps the bag nice and rigid. Um, and that's all the way around, very, very lightweight. This bag is literally, you know, doesn't weigh much at all. So it's really, really good. So that's the, um, that's the, the frame it's made of there. It's, it's got um, enhanced EVA padded jersey laminate hip belt as well and shoulder straps. So here, they do appear quite flimsy and they're really thin. But actually, you know, from some of the other reviews as well I've looked at and I looked at F-Stop's website, you know, it's, it is designed to be lightweight and not too chunky and heavy and thick. Some of these padded ones you get are really, really thick. You get really sweaty as well, but they do the job. They've got nice little D-rings here as well for attachment points. Um, a nice little carry strap there as well and hanging strap, which is absolutely ideal. Um, and also it's got uh, some of the hip belts and shoulder belts there. So the hip belts are there, really, really nice. Quite self-explanatory with the buckles and, and the clasp together. Nice little section for pulling them there. Really, really nice, nice and easy. And you've got obviously an adjustable, really, really good thing actually. This, uh, this sort of breast chest strap is really good because you can obviously move it up and down, which is great. And same on the other side. And you've got an additional clip there as well for your um, for your water hydration system. One thing I did, um, I liked this feature on low pro bags, but unfortunately low pro used to have a smaller part at the bottom. And when you used to zip it down sometimes, it used to come off. And when you used to zip it back up again, it did used to pull off quite easily. I didn't really like that. Plus there's a, uh, there's a nice little uh, whistle there just to uh, aid your location if you get trapped or you go down or anything like that. But uh, a really, really nice, back to the rucksack. Really, really good thing as well, I think, is, is this sort of tailored system at the back. Now these ridges all the way down here, this just allows for additional airflow to, uh, to go through your back so you don't get too sweaty. So a really, really nice, not too heavily padded, 
but just a lovely little, and it's so comfortable on your back, it really is. Um, absolutely lovely. Um, and uh, obviously you can adjust these as well, just uh, accordingly at the back, just to give you a bit more support. Um, but that really is the harness and, um, and the belt uh, system on this rucksack. Okay, now I'm going to go into some of the additional pockets that the uh, Ajna has. Um, just starting at the, the back then, um, we've got these. Now, not a great start, I guess, but we've got these little mesh stretchy pockets there with some elastic at the top. And obviously got some loops there for attachment points, uh, compass, um, you know, GPS or something like that. But these here are kind of, there's a hole at the bottom. I don't really know what they're for. Um, you could probably fit some sort of uh, oat bar in there, or maybe a mag light, or something really, but it's certainly two fingers in there, not enough to get a mobile phone in. Um, to me, it's a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a, just an add-on that doesn't really um, work up to much really. I don't think it has any other function, but um, so I'm not really sure what they're all about. You've got some nice D-rings here, really, really solid. Really, I was wondering about this bag, it just feels absolute quality all the way through. Um, and these are obviously great attachment points to put some other bits and bobs on. And so that's basically those little pockets on there. Um, and what we've got here on the um, on the uh, waist strap, again, is these little stretchies. Now, you can fit something in there, but it really has got a restrictive point there, so you can just get your thumb in and it's sewed up uh, up to that point. So I'm not really sure what you could get in there. What I'd like to have seen really is is a, is a, a zipper along there that you could pop some stuff in, money or what, bits and bobs. You know, a very small area, but a bit more secure. That doesn't really do an awful lot. Um, you've also got some webbing loops there. You can attach some additional bits to as well. Um, but yeah, I'm not really sure about that bit. But, um, but yeah, still really well made and um, certainly, uh, you know, very, very good quality there. And you've also got some attachment loops there as well. You can fit additional stuff to. Um, you can have uh, obviously a, a, t a tent, a roll mat, sleeping bag, whatever, and you've obviously got the same at the top. So that's at the back of the bag there. Also, you have got here is a zipper at the bottom. It's quite well hidden, actually. Can't fit an awful lot in there, granted, but uh, you could put your rain cover in there, which is um, easy access for that, and maybe some other bits, some gloves and a hat or something like that. So, uh, yeah, that's... Oh, these zippers are great. Um, something else in the bottom. So that's basically the... At that side of the pack, what we've got here now is um, got some a, an additional side pockets on each side. Obviously, in there I've got just a, a rain jacket. Um, nothing else inside there. No other additional, um, you know, zippers or anything like that in there. Just fasten up that side. Reconnect. Same at the bottom. So it's exactly the same on the other side. You've obviously got the additional. Uh, zippers along there as well so that's not too bad um, and then you flip bag over and what we've got there as we can see you've got a nice really really as I said before really really close zipper there and that's a nice good size space at the front and I've just got a little fleece gelée in there quite quite big um, and there's no additional pockets or anything inside there it's just literally a, a quite a a large space really so you can obviously that jacket you could probably get a, a windproofer in there um, base layer um, spare socks you know some bits and bobs in there so that pads out quite nicely so when the rucksack is full it becomes quite quite a big pack really um, that's the one at the front so so the sides the bottom the one at the front and now we work our way to the top now this is quite nice this little top pouch here although it could be better like everything so here we have flap opens i have got a little elasticated mesh pocket there to store stuff in whatever you want to put in there phone key key, key fob wallet etc um, and that's a great little addition there with the key fob just disconnects keys on there clags back in pretty robust which is really quite nice although be aware obviously with your keys on you know if you've got anything of sensitive nature in there phone screen batteries you name it keys wobbling around can scratch obviously whatever you've got in there but uh, yeah, a nice little space, and that's at the very top of the bag. What I'd like to have seen really on this part, it's just a bit of a wasted space really, is an additional mesh pocket there would have been ideal, um, just to store some additional bits in. But that's uh, at the very top. Okay, now we're going into the main part of the bag. What's up? Okay. This is where it, the main component area is. You can look in there. 
Okay, so we've got there at the top another zipper mesh pocket. There's some attachment points there. So that's quite nice just to fit additional bits of kit in, whatever you need in there really. Memory cards, batteries, you know, it's 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 pretty good. It's, there's plenty of room in there. That's also quite nice. And here is your main additional space. So as I said before, it's a 40 litre bag. You've got ideal room down at the sides here where your obviously hydration system can go. You can fit additional bits of kit down there as well. Um, and you've got a fair chunk of space at the top there for you know some additional clothing, lunch, you know, flask, a tea, whatever. Um, and obviously the hydration sack fits in there as well, but we've got uh, the additional um, hydration sack um, bladder protector as well in there when you slot that inside and obviously it roots up through the, um, the uh, hydration hole. Um, but uh, that's the main obviously ICU, as I said before. So yeah, that's your additional space at the top. So that's basically all the external and internal pockets on this uh, Ajna bag. So we've gone through the, the pouches, the additional um, storage areas, and now we're gonna look at um, some of the external um, straps and linkage points for things like ski poles, tripods, monopods, um, ice clamps if you need it, whatever you need really. Um, there is quite a few uh, on the back, and in fact, you can get 10 uh, gatekeeper attachment points for this bag. Um, so for the, for the, for the uh, storage of the tripod, what they recommend, two clasps there, undo those, undo that pouch there. And what they actually recommend you do is you slide one of the legs of the tripod in there, partially zip the bag back up, keeping that leg in. So the upper portion here where the tripod head is, and then just reclag that back up. Now, as much as that's great, <laughs> if it's raining, rain cover, water ingress inside the bag, also the stability aspect of it as well. You know, to me, that's kind of a bit of an afterthought. It'd be nice if they had a pull out bit at the bottom where you could tuck the tripod into a little housing or something and stop it flapping around. So really leaving half a zipper open, I don't know, it just doesn't quite go with it, but that's what they recommend. But you know, you can attach it to other parts of the rucksack. So same on the other side with the attachment point. And obviously these, these um, fasteners here are, are really robust and they're quite easy to operate. Um, you can put the, uh, the tripod at the front. So it will take a fairly good sized tripod, but one thing there, you've got no additional pull out at the bottom, as I said, over this side, so you can't tuck the bottom legs in, stop them swaying around. Once you've secured that tripod in place, you know, you, it's gonna be moving around quite a bit. You can clamp these right down on the bag, but, but actually it's still swaying around quite a bit. So if you're moving around in your backpack, it's gonna cause quite a bit of instability at the back. So yeah, that's a little concern to be honest. And I have tried one of these packs, a friend's got one and I did like it. And there are many downsides, but there's also an awful lot of, um, of plus points. That's why I bought it. But um, you know, I can live with those. It's just some improvements that they could make probably next time round. And it's the, uh, and the same on the other side. But just to attach trekking poles. So you've got a loop there and you've got a loop that side and there's a loop at the bottom, loop at the top. So trekking poles either side of there or um, attaching uh, a monopod. So we'll just pop this in. So there, that's elasticate at the top, happy days. Clamp that down, cinch it up, job done. There's your trekking pole. Effectively, this is a monopod, either side, um, happy days all the way along. And it's quite nice here, the fastener, just tighten it up, boom, job done. It's absolutely superb and it's quite easy to just repress, repress, loosen off, and then off you go. It's um, it's quite nice, nice to have that. I mean, you could effectively attach anything you want to it, roll mat front, you know, if you're at camping. But uh, those are the some of the attachment points at the front for, for poles, tripods, and uh, monopods. We've also got these attachment points at the bottom, as I said before, for additional stuff with additional gatekeepers. And uh, you've also got the two at the top as well. I don't know if I failed to mention, but these obviously are extension points as well, make them just pockets just a little bit bigger. Really, I don't see that brings an awful lot to the party, but and that's the same on the other side. So now we get to the main 
part of the bag really, which is the internal camera units they call them. Now this has already been, been placed in the bag because I bought it as a bundle. But this is great actually, to show you this first of all. This is quite a nice little addition here. So you've got an additional pocket there inside with a little bit of a elastic there and you can stuff obviously um, keys wallet mobile phone and stuff like that in there which is quite a nice little space and here well you've got these attachment loops it's made out of webbing different colors but to be honest you know if you're attaching anything to that as soon as you close the bag on top of your camera gear if you've got anything sharp on there it's going to rub on top of your lenses and your, and your camera so the last thing you want is a load of scratches on there so to be honest these not overly happy with really I probably wouldn't even use those um, so yeah that's a bit of an afterthought I think but uh, not totally chuffed with that so now we get on to the internal camera unit part so this is a um, slope medium and this is supposed to be able to keep uh, a gripped digital SLR so it's quite deep and um, also a varying amount of lenses so this one slope medium can take 7200 f2.8 it can take 100 to 400, obviously without um, without body and with body. Actually, I think if you change, change this configuration around, you can put in there a wide angle, fisheye. Um, you can have a varying amount of lenses. So probably 100 to 400, 70 to 200, and a couple landscape lenses, batteries. It can take an additional body as well, ungripped um, for storage areas. And one thing I do like about this is that these are really rigid. Now, on a lot of bags, you know, these are quite soft and to be honest it doesn't give it an awful lot of support and what you do want when you're actually trekking around with this is you don't want your camera gear to move around too much so nicely rigid in there um, and this has got a zip around the edge and all you do there if you want it to so if you've got stuff flagged on there technically i suppose you could just do this back up and then each side do that back up and then if you've got anything stored in there it's not going to scratch what's in there so these um, ICUs are obviously detachable they're fixed at the side with velcro loops and then you can just literally as and when you need a bigger bag you just take these out put a new one in job done so they come in varying sizes so the pro large effectively takes up the entire backpack space with only a little bit in the top so you know if you're, if you're going to carry a, a sort of a fairly large prime probably not up there with six to eight hundreds but certainly if you're doing a 300 or 400 you could probably fit that in there with with a different icu but i really do quite like that um it's a great addition to have that and just independently put things in and out and i and also you could probably just remove this and have this as a as a backpack day sack so effectively it doubles up to both things so yeah i really quite like that that's a really really good good idea you've got an additional bit of padding there as well which fits at the bottom just pull that back in there and that just loops down underneath all in all they're really really nice I mean really really light and these this is I say is a sloped one and you can see there now that's the additional room there one thing that you might be bearing in mind as well is when you're loading this up and it's quite heavy there is um, if you can see is that may squash down a little bit but to be honest this is quite solid and you can also use these you've got a carrying handle on top and you can use this for um taking it out and just carrying that around with you if you wanted to if you're not going anywhere on a on a trek and stuff and you're just going to and fro in the car or whatever so yeah pretty good pretty good bit of kit actually Well guys, that concludes my review today on the F-Stop Agena Mountain Series 40 litre bag. Um, I hope you enjoyed the review. It's a short one. It's just to give you a bit of an insight on what bags are really out there that you can use for different purposes. Like I said, some camera bags are purposely designed just to carry the camera equipment themselves and no internal space with or very little internal space or external space. But this bag obviously provides you with that little bit more of a luxury really when you're out trekking. So you can get your gear in there. You can get your gear out quite quite um, easily. What I didn't say as well, the good thing about this design with the compartment at the back is that when you've got your waist strap on, you can flip your bag around, straps out, flip your bag around, unzip it, take your camera out and go. And that's a really good um, bonus point as well. It stops your bag getting mucky, dirty, having to put your bag down, get your camera gear out, subject's gone. You know, it's quite nice to have that and that, that support there, obviously bearing in mind that weight is inside your bag. So it's a really good point, but there are many good and bad points um, but to be honest, I think, you know, the good points uh, outweigh the bad ones. 
Um, one thing I did say is what it failed to mention as well, the, the bag itself comes in this colour and also comes in a very bright orange and black as well. It's, um, it's got a 20 year guarantee. So they've got to have confidence in their in their products, really. I mean, 20 year guarantee for a bag is, is pretty damn good. And uh, certainly when I've seen some people that have had issues with bags, which are very few, you know, they've sent the bag back, they've looked at it, they've either repaired it or they've given them a brand new bag and they paid for all the postage. So, you know, you can't grumble with buying from a good company. And they are pretty much probably the best company out there hence the price of the bags. But, uh, and also this one, the Ajna, the Lotus, they're all uh, airport carry-on as well, which is a really, really big bonus, really, rather than having to pack your kit in the main hold, which is always a worry, um, provided obviously you don't bolster the pack out too much at the front and at the sides, obviously, to, um, to make that a little bit bigger, then you're obviously not gonna be able to get it on the aircraft. But uh, yeah, all in all, really, um, a great bag. I kind of give it a, Eight and a half out of ten, I think, as far as they go with bags. I mean, that's only in my opinion. Um, I've I've always had low pro, and I've had mind shift. But uh, for the, for me, this is my now backpack trekking bag with uh, a relatively light outfit, if you like. But uh, well worth a look. I'll leave the links um, below in the description. Well, I thank you all for watching today. Um, this review. Um, I hope you liked it. If you did, please give us a good old thumbs up and. Um, also leave a comment if you can, anything you liked, anything you didn't like, um, anything I missed out maybe, or any questions you do have. For those that don't subscribe, you know, please just click that uh, all important subscribe button and um, also click that bell to be notified of any future videos coming out. And uh, I hope to bring you a new vlog in the field very soon. But uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.